Chris Lotz with the Pat Lotz Real Estate Group coming back again with another Community Spotlight video. Great one this month. We are at Brass and Oak here on Main Street, and today we're with Jen. Pat? Hi, Pat Lotz here. Um, hi, Jen. We're really excited to be here and welcome you to this great community. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Jen. I'm the owner of Brass and Oak. Um, I originally am from South Lyon. Um, that's where I spent a lot of my time you know, looking at magazines and that kind of stuff to get my inspiration. Um, so then when I went to college, um, I went to school for fashion merchandising. And um, while I was in school, I did internships with showrooms that would come to like Livonia and like show boutiques, like the up and coming like fashions and everything. So I fell in love with that. Yeah. So when I moved to Chicago with my then boyfriend, now husband, um, I started working for a showroom in the merchandise mart, which was like a dream of mine like when I was in school and stuff and from that I left like the showrooms and the merchandise mart to work for a designer that like designed and manufactured everything in Chicago and that was where I learned everything That's exciting. yeah <laughs> and one thing that we don't normally always see is somebody that has such an extensive background and very something similar to this mm -hmm. so uh, I think a lot of people drive towards a passion mm -hmm. but that's been a part of like your whole life like yeah. your passion Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool because yeah. we, we also have a lot of conversation where people say, yeah, I came from finance. Hey, I came from this. I came from that. And I, I always wanted to do this. What a cool thing. You went to college for it. Mm -hmm. You went to Chicago for mm -hmm. it. And you came back to still do it. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell us from Chicago and all that to where? So, what brought you back home? Yeah, so um, I'm really close to my family and Nick's family. Um, my parents are best friends with his parents. So <laughs> we're very close knit. So when it was time to like, when I started wanting to have kids, I was like, Nick, one, I want to travel, and then I need to be close to family to be able yeah. to raise the kids and stuff. Absolutely. So we went to Italy, came back pregnant. <laughs> there you go. Plan, so, yep. plan motion. <laughs> um, but during that time, I was in this like limbo land because we had left Chicago, mm -hmm. and I was like, what next? Like, what am I going to do like career-wise? Because I went from working for this designer in Chicago to starting my own showroom, like working with independent designers that were all Chicago based, hoping to like get them into like more boutiques like throughout the country and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But then I was pregnant and I was like, oh, all right, we're gonna change this. It's not gonna be a showroom, I'm not gonna do wholesale, I'm gonna do retail. So I was doing like pop-ups and that kind of stuff. And I was like, all right, 2020 is gonna be my year. I'm gonna do pop-ups and then eventually I'm gonna like have a boutique. So I signed up. I had two events each month lined up for 2020. Mm -hmm. Well, we all know what happened. Yeah, it didn't happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, yeah, exactly. So I was a stay-at-home mom, and I loved it until I was like, okay, I need to do something again. Because I've always been that person like, didn't want to be a stay-at-home mom, which is not, like, a bad thing. It's just no. not a good thing for me right. personally. Um, so I was like, all right, what's next? And I started working for... Um, a wholesale showroom again, but like for gifts and stationery and all that, mm -hmm. um, and kind of like put the dream of having a boutique on the back burner. Mm -hmm. And uh, like last May, I literally started selling off like my racks, my mannequins, product that I like had stocked up oh. and all that kind of stuff. Cause I was like, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah cause yeah. I love I loved the job that I was doing. Cause yeah. I got to like meet boutique owners and sell them product. That's how I know Natalie from the Wallflower Mercantile. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get to that story <laughs> later. <laughs> so I, um, I loved it and then- I think a great place to kind of pause too is, let's mm -hmm. talk about that family. Yeah. So husband, Nick, mm -hmm. two kids. Mm -hmm. What are the ages? Yeah. Where are they at at this point in time? So Nick and I have been together for almost 13 years, married for six, mm -hmm. about to go on our sixth anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, we have two kids, Liam and Oliver. Um, Oliver's our four-year-old and Liam's our eight-month-old. <laughs> busy. Yeah. Busy. busy and maybe barely sleeping. Yes, I, I don't sleep. <laughs> But like you said, you know, through a uh, through an interesting time, transitional periods, Chicago, Italy, moving back home, mm -hmm. now pregnant, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, 
still pushing that passion, maybe pushing it aside, uh, trying to figure out motherhood, also uh, create a business. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a transitional period. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, it's 2022. Mm -hmm. You walk into the store that was previously Merchantile, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, what did you think? This is where I need to be. I, like, I literally walked into Natalie's store originally, and I was like, oh my gosh, her store is amazing. I was mm -hmm. like, one day, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, whenever really? she moves out, like, I'm, I'm going to be like, hey, girl, <laughs> like, I need your space. It's my dream space. Let me know when you're moving out. Well, we were driving downtown, about to like go like celebrate our five-year anniversary, and I see a sign like where her space is now coming soon. I was like, hold this, hold on, yeah. what? So I'm, yeah, I was like, stop. <laughs> I immediately texted her, I was like, uh, what's happening? Like, um, is your space still available? I, I would love to open a store there. She, you know, said, hey, I think somebody like already has it, but I'll give you Mike's information. I was like, okay, cool. So all weekend, you know, heading like on our anniversary, Nick and I are daydreaming and, you know, be like, okay, we can make this happen. And I'm like, I don't know if you know how much work this is and at this time I'm seven months pregnant so I'm like about to have a baby like any day yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. he's like his words that I will never forget is we'll make it work Good. Yeah. that's we, that's support we yeah. had a similar yeah. conversation with uh, uh Cindy's at the corner mm -hmm. and uh husband financial advisor mm -hmm. same thing mm -hmm. do it yeah. this is the yeah. time we mm -hmm. gotta do it yeah um and if you don't have that support system within a small business you know what do you have mm -hmm. you don't have anything no. So great to hear. I mean, obviously, you know, your family has to be supportive, moving back, helping with the family, and also creating this great space. Yeah. How did you know Natalie, though? So I knew her from my wholesale job that I had that previous I to this. Like, so I was selling her product. So I instantly, that's how I had her information and, like, was able to have that little connection um, to jump on it quickly. This, <laughs> so when you called Mike, what, yeah. what happened? Was it Well, available? this was a busy space. Uh -huh. And I know, I know people were lining up the door to yeah. try to get this space. So do you know how many people were inquiring about the um, space? I think at the time, I think there was, like, four people, okay. <laughs> if not more. Yeah, that's still, I mean, that's still competitive. You know, yeah, I think there might have been even too? six. Like, it was just kind of a round robin. And so there was somebody... Um, so there was somebody, but then um, she decided to find a spot in Howell, okay. um, and I was like, he was like, all right, there's still people like that are in line, and I was just like, I when I was on my anniversary trip, I had put together a business plan oh <laughs> and like a little like um, collage of like what I'd want this space oh, yeah. to look like. So I presented. I came that Thursday after I got back to Mike, and I was like, here's my presentation, and he was like. No one did that. He's like, you have a presentation? I'm like, yes, this is my dream space. Yeah. I'm oh. like, don't look at the baby bump. Don't let this are yeah, like, yeah. you. No. Uh, you, you know, it's sort of cool. You had the whole weekend to sort of dream about it mm -hmm. and, and talk with your husband to put the plan together, which was in your brain anyway. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. know. I know it was in your brain. Mm -hmm. this, yeah. Yeah, this came together very quickly. So Mike said yes. He said yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mike's, Mike's a businessman, but he also has, um, you know, very artistic background. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that resonated with him as well yeah. in kind of, your presentation, your passion, and he probably has a lot of great passion as well within mm -hmm. his hobbies and his art, art itself. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if that was just, this is the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah we, I think we just like connected and then he met my husband and we kind of, we've become friends like yeah. since very nice and people. Mm -hmm, very, very nice supportive people. and yeah, I, so I don't even have words because I'm so blessed Good. to have yes. him as a landlord. Yeah. <laughs> See, that was we, just meant to be. Mm -hmm. It just all fell into place. How yeah. long has it been? Yeah. Um, so we just celebrated our six month anniversary with a ribbon cutting. Yes. So yeah. yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. That was my next question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so tell us a little bit more how's things going. I know. So it's been good. Everybody keeps on coming in like, I'm so sorry that you're opening during like all this construction. And I'm like, I don't know any different. Like there's been so much support, not only with my own family, but through the community. Like everybody's been so welcoming. That was my dream. Like my whole life, I was like, I want to be a part of a community and I want to be supported, but also support other businesses. Right. And this downtown has been more than a dream like, because it's actually happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when I first was opening, Sunny's came down with a, a pan of muffins to welcome us. Captains would come over with pizzas. Do you want this pizza? We made too many. <laughs> like, you didn't make too many. <laughs> like, yeah. Made me like, one specifically. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's, we've had a conversation with Captains on Main. Obviously, mm -hmm. we, uh, we've met Sunny's on the Corner. 
Um, that's the one thing that we're kind of starting to see with these new small business owners yeah. is camaraderie, mm -hmm. less competition yeah. and more collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so refreshing. My next question to you was, well, one, where do you live right now? Mm -hmm. Brighton? I live here in Brighton. Brighton, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think another great question is, is well, you know, why downtown Brighton for you? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of great downtown areas. Howell is, yeah. South Lyon is. But what was it for you for downtown Brighton? And I think a lot of that has to do with the foundations of the collaboration of those businesses. Yeah. Um, I mean, I walking into this, I really didn't know um, what the downtown was going to be like. Um, but what landed us here was my parents are still in South Lyon, my sister's in Howell. Brighton was always, I don't know, I was always pulled towards Brighton. Mm -hmm. Even like when we came back from Chicago, like this like reminds me of like the Chicago neighborhood that I lived in. Yeah. So there's just something that always draw, like drew me to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, um, it's just really a, a great community yeah. and uh, a lot of things going on, a lot of great businesses. Um, I would love to own a business on Main Street. Mm -hmm. She's been talking about owning a building for years. And Pat's an OG, uh, Bright Tinian. Um, she lived on Dillon Street, just outside of downtown. I am, so, I am. so I she, get around. She always talk about what, uh, you yeah. know it changed a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's yeah. what's your line? We used to ride bikes to the DNC. To the DNC yeah. down a, where Saigonos used to be, yeah. which is now Natalie's mm -hmm. place and Todd's. Yeah. So yeah, we'd come down. There's a big candy center that's probably as big as this room, and it was yeah. so good. I love yeah, it's very cute. So cute stories, but the, um, Brighton's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the end is. I mean, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel for a lot of this uh, downtown construction. I mean, it's coming along. Very very, very well. Like you said, a lot of the businesses are still very much supported mm -hmm. and embraced in the community. Um, so, you know, come far and wide, even with construction, people are going to come yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. If you have a great business, great product, um, then you will thrive. And obviously that's a testament to all these other businesses mm -hmm. that are continuing to do that. Um, what does the future hold for Brass and Oak? And Jen, we're not holding you to anything, <laughs> but is there any kind of plans second locations, evolution of the store. What does that kind of look like? Yeah, so my five-year goal is to open another location that be like another location, you know, in Grand Rapids or like more of like a beachy town. Like that's like the mm -hmm. dream. Um, but I would also like to open like a Brass and Oak like baby, like a store that's just like maybe baby Specialized and specialized, you know, just like other like, you know, Things um, to be part of the community even more. That's really cool. We'll that's call it. Really we'll call well if it's the beach thing. We'll call it Brass and Beach. Yeah, <laughs> oh. Brass and Beach. See us in Holland. Yeah. So. Yes, I love it. Yeah. I, I love. I love your store. I love you so um, your your collections, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's beautiful. You have really I, good taste. I said the same thing at Sunny's on Main. It feels like that boutique has been there forever. It feels no different than this. It mm -hmm. feels like the boutique has been forever. You're a part of the community. You could have told me you've been here for ten years. I wouldn't know any different. So, and I and I also do know the history of this. Mm -hmm. But when I hear other businesses talk about you and seeing the collaborative effort, again, you could all convince me that you have been here for ten years. So, I think a testament to the Thank community, you. downtown Brighton. Mm -hmm. I love the new slogan, "Believe in Brighton." Yes. Let's continue Same. to do that. Oh, I love um, that. Thanks for having us. Thank you yeah, so yeah. much. Really I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and this doesn't end here. You know, it's, it's to all the businesses downtown. You know, collaboration has to continue to happen through 2023, 2024, on and on and on. Thanks again for tuning in to another Community Spotlight video. Thanks to Brass and Oak and Jen. Tune in next time. See you in the next one.